Okay, I'm seeing a bar. Let me see. Is this better? I may have to. I may have to start over. Um. Okay. <laughs> God, I'm such an idiot. I should have looked at it. It's like uh, I'm in Ob Studio here, and I should have been looking at the bar. And uh, now I can see that I'm talking. Oh my God! All right. So, so how far are we into this thing? So I'm. I'm looking at my uh, timer. I'm 14 minutes in, and this entire time I was silent. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. Okay. Yep, 14 minutes in, and I'm an idiot. All right, so let's. I'm going to have to start over. <laughs> yeah, silent gray. So let's start from the very beginning, shall we? So my name is Gray, and I am the owner and founder of a game called Core Mud. We just call it Core, uh, but if you go online, it's coremud.org, and we're listed on Mud Connector. We're listed on Top Mud Sites. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat what just happened in chat. <laughs> I'm being teased in Twitch here. Um, yes, I'm an asshole. Um, I will occasionally swear. Uh, I will probably self-rate this video as PG-13. Uh, I will not show nudity, and you can see I'm not even showing myself because none of you people want to actually see what I look like. So just use your imagination. Um, so this game is a text game. It is online, and it is multiplayer. So if I were to pull up my game client, as I was explaining um, earlier, although you can hear me, uh, who's on? So right now, we, we don't have a whole lot of people on. It's, uh, what is it, um, Saturday night, um, but it's almost 11.30 p.m. U.S. Central Time. So depends on, you know, when you log in. I mean, sometimes we can have, you know, 15. Sometimes we get up to 20. Um, but right now, this is kind of a slow, a slow time for us. But you can interact with whomever you see. So you can talk to people. You can talk privately, you can talk in the public channel, uh, you can talk to people in the room, you can explore, and I'm about to show you a, um, I'm about to show you a mechanic that is typically only experienced by players who are level 20 and higher. Now there is a newbie quest that teaches you a little bit about this, and I'm going to show you it right now. So, when I was silent and you couldn't actually hear me explaining I was I brought up this this map it's a crude map I did it in MS paint sorry this is the best I can do I am NOT a graphical designer okay I write code for a living and I do other things that I'm not gonna get into but I don't do graphics so I did this in paint and this is a representation of what our game world looks like in the managed section where it is safe to go from place to place and you do not need an environment suit. So let's talk briefly about the game. The game is based on a fictional planet at the edge of the explored galaxy, if you will. And we call it Core. There's an official name, Hermes, our stars, Hermes 571G. We have two moons that orbit the planet or orbit the star, blah, blah, blah. But the idea is that we are a mining colony. And the surface of the planet is extremely dangerous. So if I were to step outside without an environment suit, I will die within about a minute. And uh, you know, how long you survive out there depends upon your, uh, on your level and how much strength and constitution you have. Um, if I were to go out as my level 2 test character, he's going to die in about a minute or less. Um, because it's cold, and the atmosphere is not breathable. It's not oxygen. It's like, you know, it's poisonous stuff. So you're going to die if you go out there unprotected. So in the map that I'm showing you right now, this is what we call the city complex, or what I call it anyway. Therefore, that's what we call it. <laughs> And I oh, see my guy smiles when I smile. Isn't that cool? I like that guy, and I like that robot on my shoulder. That's a. I want one. I want one of those in real life. 
I just want to walk into a grocery store with a robot like that and like point the laser pointer at somebody and say, I'm not wearing a mask. Leave me alone, Karen. Okay. Uh, so this, these bubbles that you see on my screen, these are domes. And so these are the protected areas. You can go from dome to dome. You go through these mass transit tubes and you can safely go from place to place and you do not need any kind of environment suit. You only have to have an environment suit on when you, when you enter, uh, uh, how do I say this? When you exit an airlock. So if you voluntarily step out through an airlock and the game tells you, you know, this is an airlock, um, then once you get it, that takes you to the outside wilderness map, which I'm going to show you in tonight's recording. So let me get this thing out of here. So anyway, what I'm going to do is uh, right now, where's my character? So I am on limb. Okay, here he is. I had to bring this thing up. Limb is in the center of the north mine. So if we were to look at this crude map, the we're in this this bubble here at the top at the top center where it says zero as the X and six thirty as the Y. You don't have to know this right now, um, but this is where I am. And if you get lost and you don't know where you are, we have a command for that. We actually have several. So I'm going to show you some of them as we navigate around. But there's a reason why I hear. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even speak English now. There's a reason why I am here. In the North Mine, in the center of the North Mine, and we can type compass, and this is, uh, right? So if you're like in an airport, and you get that you are here thing, I'm in the center, so I'm in this little red asterisk. And it gives you your position. And by the way, this game, and I've, I've made another video on this topic, but every single room in the game has a unique X, Y, and Z that's mappable on graph paper. So if you wanted to map the entire game on graph paper, you actually could if you're that OCD. And believe it or not, we do have some people that are like that. And that's perfectly cool. One pet peeve of mine is I've always been bothered by games where you go from like one coder's environment to another coder's environment in, in the old school magic uh, muds. They call them wizards. And you go from one wizard's castle to another wizard's castle and stuff starts overlapping. In core, we don't have that. So in core, we enforce unique coordinates for every single room in the game. And one of our coders has even written a mapping program that checks it. And uh, he, he can run a report that says, oh, hey, we've got a problem in, in area such and such. And we've got some XYZ coordinates that overlap or are missing. And then we put somebody on it to go fix it. So it, it is uh, kind of a labor of love. Anyway, North Mine Center. Why am I here? Well, I'm going to show you why. In the North Mine Center, there is something called the Miner Service Station. And you don't have to type the whole thing. You can just do look, and letter L is the abbreviation for that. Oh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just got hit. <laughs> Oh, Jasmine just logged in, and uh, that's what I was talking about. I was trying to explain at the beginning of the recording while I was muted. If you're on a work call and you're playing core, type set sound and look for the message that says off. You do not want to have that thing turned on when, a, when somebody logs in and they've got a funny login sound like you just heard. So, uh, that was funny. Okay, so you can type L, abbreviation for look, and we can type station, or we could type the whole damn thing. We could type minor service station, but I'm lazy. i look at the station. And what I need for this character, I need to buy a power cell, because I'm going to need one. 
Oh, that just triggered a quest. All right, we're about to trigger another quest. So I need a power cell, and I'll explain why in a little while. Now, here I am. We poke Jasmine. All right. Oh, and I should probably minimize this map so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be heading south on this map. Um, Jasmine, don't be greedy. <laughs> and I'm going to go down to this yellow dome in the, um, you see in the, the center bottom. So this is a, a mass transit node, and when I walk there, it's going to trigger a chest. Yeah. Let's not talk about chest while, uh, did I say chest? I meant quest, but there was Jasmine, so I was a little distracted thinking about her chest. Okay. Let's keep going. I'm walking through the south housing dome, and I've just arrived at the south man tr mass transit, and I'm going to go down, and I've got a rover. And what I need to do is I need to board this guy. And if the first time you go here, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. You look at the rover, and it tells you you can type this command to hop aboard. This is an automated transit system, if you will. All right. I've just boarded the rover. I'm inside of it. And the rover is going to take me out of the city complex that I've been walking through just now. And it's going to take me to what is called a PMD cluster. And so while we're waiting, and this is only going to take a minute for this um, rover to move around, so we can see the rover has, has started. It's about one minute from the city complex to the PMD cluster. It parks, you get off, you do what you want to do, and then the rover comes back, and it just goes back and forth about one minute each time. So let's take a look here. So it was scheduled to depart at 11.37 and 22 seconds local time. And... We should be um, arriving at our destination very soon. And I'll explain it. Okay, we just arrived. So I type exit to get out. And now I'm in the cluster garage. So what is a cluster? What's a PMD? So I'm going to first, I'm going to take my little test character here, Lim. And I'm going to take him to my own PMD. I'm going to take him to gray. I'm in Gray's PMD. Uh, sorry, Jasmine, but uh, it depends on how long you died. Um, if your corpse, if you got killed a long time ago, like hours ago, corpse is gone. The corpse will disintegrate within like five minutes. So um, I don't know what else to tell you. You're going to have to. Use your quests, I mean, your breasts, I mean, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, PMD is an acronym. It stands for Personal Mining Dome. So it is a, a player. <laughs> Give Jasmine money, yeah. <sighs> yes, Jasmine doesn't change. Okay, let me get back to my, my story here. So, uh, PMD, Personal Mining Dome. It is something that a player can buy. It is intended to be for upper layer, upper level players. So we're talking like level 20 plus. You can, if you can afford one earlier than that, great. But you really can't fully utilize the thing until you hit level 20. Because level 20 is when you can mine inside of it. So when we talk about PMD, M stands for mining. So you get your own personal mine. So again, let's take a look at this map again. So these red domes that you see 
on the peripheries. Those are the company operated mines in which mine that you access is um, basically depending upon your level and your, your mining rank. And I, that's probably too complex to get into in, into this recording, but just know that there are four company operated mines and each company operated mine has a fixed amount or fixed types of minerals or metals that you can mine there. PMDs are completely different. So the way a PMD works, and I'm going to demonstrate, and let's see if I can, uh, and I may have to switch over to gray because I think limb might be blocked from what I'm about to do. Uh, let's resize. Oh, I'm having all kinds of problems here. All right, let's get this guy going. Let's bring this back to the front. And I'm going to pull up my mudlet, and I'm going to type west, and can I go west? Okay. So I'm in Gray's PMD, and Gray has a mine. Every PMD comes with a mine. And you can look at the panel, and it says, um, in this case, I restricted uh, who can open up new mining shafts to specific people. By default, it's open to everybody. And um, what will happen is every week, your primary and secondary ores will be randomized. So right now, if I were to open up a new mining shaft, the primary thing will be uranium. So when I do mining, that's what I'm going to get most. And then as the secondary ores, I, you can see I have magnesium and gold. So I'll get those also, but I'll get less of them than the primary. So this is randomized. So once you hit level 20, you can go into these PMDs. You can look at the panels in the entrance, and it'll tell you what's, what's now available. So now as a level 20 plus player, you can pick and choose where you want to mine and you can find a PMD that has the good stuff and you're wanting Corzite is is the best thing that you can possibly get let's take a look so Corzite is why the company which is the evil entity that runs the show here uh, the company established the mining colony on the planet core because it has Corzite. And Corzite is, if you're familiar with like Frank Herbert's Dune, and there's a couple other um, fictions that have similar mechanics, but basically you think of this as Corzite is like the spice in Dune. And there's another series where um, you mine something and it's necessary for space travel. In Kors, in Kors fictional world, Corzite is a metal that is absolutely necessary for interstellar space travel. It makes space travel a lot faster than traditional engines, if you will. And the planet core that we are on is the place to get it. So Corzite is very expensive, and if you find a mine that has Corzite, that's where you want to be. Uh, these other things, some of them are like, okay, silicon, it's not a metal, okay? When, when this thing was created, and by the way, um, this game was created initially back in, uh, development started in 1995, and we went live January 1st, 1996. Um, so this has been, um, we're now in our 25th year. We're not scientists, we're not geologists, we're just regular people. <laughs> so there's some things here that exist in the game that are not real life, like mithril. <laughs> so um, there's some stuff that we borrowed from other genres, other games, but we tried to make, you know, for the most part, we tried to make it sci-fi. Okay, so anyway, let's talk about a little bit more about PMDs and then I'm going to show you the outside world. Um, a PMD 
has the following characteristics. So you have a mine, and I just showed you that. And I don't think I'll be able to go down there. Oh, I can. Okay. Um, I didn't realize that limb could go down there. Okay. And I am limb, right? Okay, yeah, I am. And um, we can close booze and equipment all in one. No. Um, well, actually, there is, Jasmine. Um, there is one area in the game that has everything. Um, aside from the starport. So when you are in the starport, Jasmine, um, and I know you're listening because you've been teasing me on the on Twitch, um, the starport is limited to... You know, right now we have a temporary exception. So when we relaunch the game back in December, we put in a temporary exception that lets everybody shop in the, in the starport. Um, once that temporary exception expired, then it's going to be limited to characters like level 5 and lower. So you're, I think you're level 2, 1 or 2, Jasmine. Um, so you can go to the starport. There's a bar where you can get your booze. There's a clothing stop, shop where you can get your armor. And then there's a weapon shop where you can get uh, weapons, obviously. And, um, and then after that, um, Nigel had just talked about there is a Northeast Merchant Hub. And let me pull that up on my little map here. So I guess I'm taking this a little bit off field, but that's okay. So if you were to look at this overview, um, uh, if you are in the green, which is the city, you go over to the east and then one north and that is the Northeast Merchant Hub, and that's where there are shops available that if we don't have any player shop owners online, um, those shops will become open in the Northeast Merchant, and you can buy stuff there. So the, the game economy, by the way, is, is, player, is meant to be player-driven. So every player can have what I'm about to show you. So let me pull this up. So this is one very important feature of um uh ooh, better pricing um so nigel brings up a good point and this is another reason why i wanted to talk about the pmd system so every pmd in addition to having a mine and um basically you know I, need, I have a lot of stuff that's been drilled out, but I have other stuff that's available. So anyway, I, I don't want to really talk about mining in, in much detail tonight. Um, just to know that um, every PMD will have a mine, and each PMD will have its own unique or randomized um, list of metals that change every single week. Um, the, the trick is is that that only takes effect when you open up a brand new mining shaft. So if you have a pre-existing mining shaft, that mining shaft is going to keep what it has, but it can be it can be depleted. Um, so then you can, oh, oops. Okay, stop distracting me, Jazz. Darn it. Okay, aside from the mine, you have the ability to buy one shop of your choice. So when you own your own PMD, you can pick and choose what kind of shop that you want to run, and it will be in your PMD. So for example, in Gray's PMD, Gray owns a weapon shop. Um, you can also, or you could own an armor shop, or you can own a, a refinery, and there's other types of shops that you can get as well. So you, you pick and choose one. And that's an upgrade that you can buy. So you don't get a shop out of the box, so to speak, but you, you can buy it. Um, and set a command, you know, right here. Of course, I'm not the owner, but Gray is. And Gray needs to be in his PMD. I'll, I'll move Gray later. So um, if you are the owner of the PMD, you can buy add-ons. And so... In my PMD, Grays, I have everything. Um, 
most PMD owners also buy all the upgrades available and so the upgrades that you get is you get a um, to the southwest you get your own private apartment to the southeast you can buy um, a atrium which is essentially our farming system and this is a this is something actually that's under active development right now um, so I can look at it and as a guest I can actually water stuff and you can water every single atrium every 30 minutes five times so I'm now done here but I can go to somebody else's atrium and I can water there and I get uh, oh there's a reboot coming well shoot you get skill points so as you water crops that are not yours you will get skill points so there is a benefit for you to, to get that all right I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to speed this up um, so you get the mine you get the shop you get the farming and then um, you get the apartment okay I am going to um, before the world ends I'm gonna quickly show you outside and I'm gonna have to cheat a little bit so forgive me for cheating um, you saw me earlier buy a um, a power cell so that's you can think of it as a battery so you need a power cell if you're gonna go outside you're gonna need a flashlight and an environment suit and spare oxygen tank and um, and no reboot <laughs> so I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly switch over to gray and I'm gonna hop over and visit Lim so let me just make sure no one's watching I don't like to do teleportation in front of a player you're not seeing this okay so this is you're totally not seeing what I'm doing all right totally you didn't see that what I just did I'm gonna give Lim I have a spare oxygen tank and maybe I should go ahead and type the correct syntax my own damn game ah okay give let's try it again alright oh come on oh it's give o2 there we go so we have an oxygen canister, and you need that to refill your environment suit. I'm going to give him an environment suit. And I need to give him a flashlight. Okay. So let's switch over to our, our punching bag limb. And I check my inventory. Uh, free one. Yay me. Yeah, um, that's a whole another topic about um, mining drills and upgrades and all that. So um, let's take a look at our inventory again. Okay, so we have an oxygen canister, we have our power cell, we have a flashlight, and we have our environmental suit. And the environmental suit is the key to the whole thing. Um, let's take a look at it real quick. So the environmental suit, when you buy one, and there are player-run shops that sell them. They're called retail shops. And when you get an environment suit, it starts with full oxygen and full power. But when you go outside, that stuff starts depleting. Let's go ahead and remove all of my equipment and wear the suit. Okay. Now... I'm going to go out of the airlock and how do I do that I know I'm an idiot right uh, is it enter airlock yeah it actually PMD by the way the owner of the PMD has full control over the description of the room 
And, okay, I'm outside, and it's dark. Well, that's why I brought a, a flashlight with me. Turn flashlight up. There we go. I guess I have to do it again, huh? There we go. Okay, I'm outside. So, we're now on the outside world. And the outside map is a different scale than when you're in the, in the um, city complex. So in the city complex, you can think of each room, so to speak, as like, I don't know, like 10 meters by 10 meters square, if, if you want to be technical. Um, so each room, so to speak, inside in the city complex will have, you know, you can, it's, it's, just think of it as a, as a room in your house. Uh, outside, um, this would make sense if you've ever played the old Origin uh, Ultima games, like Ultima 3, Ultima 4, Ultima 5, where when you go to the wilderness map, it's a completely different scale. And that's what you're looking at on my screen right now. So if I move around, and you can see that asterisk in the center of the little map, and I apologize to those who can't see and are relying on a screen reader. Um, this would make absolutely no sense. The only thing you could do, if, if you are a blind person, and we do have blind people to play, um, anywhere in the game you can type the word location. And it does give you some information. It tells you where you are. Um, and I forgot to give Limb a, a GPS tracker. That would actually give like the X and Y coordinates. And then that would give you the absolute position of where you are on the map. Um, so for those who can see, um, as I move around, we see little symbols, and uh, some of them are like, you know, plains, some of them are mountains, some will be water or lava or liquid nitrogen in, in our case, because our, you know, our world is so awful. But the, um, the way that this works, so you can see here, um, I do have as the owner of the PMD, if I were to sign in, as, if I were to switch over to Gray, Gray can actually change this description. So I'm going to go inside and get back in just before I run out of oxygen. Let's take a look at our suit real quick. So you can see I've already lost power and I've lost a little bit of oxygen, but I'm still, I'm still okay. Anyway, I'm going to remove the suit and put my armor back on. I only have three minutes left. And one last characteristic of PMDs that I want to talk about that's very important is for free, I don't think you have to buy this, I'd have to go look at the code, but to the south of the PMD center is a builder area. And only the builder and a coder can see the terminal. The terminal gives you tools and these are menu driven tools that let a non programmer create an area and the person who owns the PMD can set another player as the authorized builder otherwise it's them right so it's themselves or they can say hey um, yeah I own this PMD but I want to give builder permissions to God forbid, Jasmine, so that she can make a whorehouse. Um, so, so basically, person builds a room or builds an area, and it's completely freeform. So once you go inside the builder area, now you're now the rule about X Y Z being unique that doesn't apply because you're now in a virtual area that is completely separated from the main game. And you have complete freedom to um, you have complete freedom to construct whatever you want. But if you want the area to be linked into the main game, then it does need to adhere to of course sci-fi theme. And then when we link it into the main game, we'll you know we'll attach it to the map, or we'll make a an outside area, like uh, like we can have a, an outside dome or a um, secret underground bunker, whatever we want. Because we have tons and tons of space that we can work with outside. 
um, one minute to go. So I'm going to try to wrap this up. Go red. This is what our outside map looks like. Each X that you see is 100 by 100 virtual rooms. So H7 is the city. That's that green bubble on that map I've been showing. And all these others are linked to it. And a player can go from one to the other, and a player won't know that they've moved from one grid to the other unless they have a GPS unit, a uh, GPS tracker with them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll have to make another one that really talks about the process of installing a PMD and hooking it up to a cluster. And we've got 10 seconds to go. And have a good night. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry for the first 14 minutes of silence.